Hello, young scholars. This is Mr. Martyr, and welcome to AP Government and Politics. And in today's flipped classroom, I'm going to provide you with a brief introduction to our American political system. But before we do anything else, we have to ask ourselves, where do we get our rights from? The rights that Thomas Jefferson wrote about in 1776 and the rights that were codified into our American Constitution in 1789. And if you remember from your world cultures class or the two British philosophers, Thomas Hobbes and John Locke, they wrote competing theories on man's state of nature. They were two of the most important political philosophers of the 18th century that saw governments go from an absolute monarch to governments being replaced by limited monarchies, or in the case of the United States, a republic. So before we even begin a course on American government and politics, we have to understand what are the ideals of American democracy? What is it that Americans fundamentally believe in? Well, the first thing that we believe in is that the United States government is based on the idea of a limited government. What does that mean? Well, that means quite simply that our government is based on a system of separation of powers, power being divided between the federal and state governments, and also a system of checks and balances, where our government is divided into three competing branches of government. The legislative branch that writes the laws, the executive branch that enforces the laws, and the judiciary branch that interprets the laws. So the first ideal of American democracy is the idea of natural rights. And as you recall, John Locke said that those natural rights include life, liberty, and property. And most importantly, was property. John Locke argues that government should never touch the private property of citizens. Now, in order to protect citizens' natural rights, that takes us to our next ideal of American democracy, and that is a social contract. The idea behind the social contract is that when members of a society enter into an agreement, you will give up some of your rights for the greater good of the group. And in exchange, the government will protect you. And as we will see in the case of the American Revolution, the colonists made the argument that, in fact, Great Britain was breaking or invalidating the social contract by not protecting the colonists' natural rights. And therefore, the colonists had a right to rebel against a government that oppressed them. The third ideal of American democracy is that of popular sovereignty. And the idea behind popular sovereignty is that if all members of a commonwealth or if all members of a country are equal with their natural rights, then they have the right to exercise power, that the government cannot do anything without the consent of the people, that we the people give the government power, which takes us to our final ideal of American democracy, and that is republicanism. The idea behind a republican form of government is that in a country geographically as large as the United States – the best decisions would be made when the people elect representatives to seats of government and make decisions on their behalf. And if the people were not satisfied with the job that their elected officials are doing, they can vote those individuals out of office. But ultimately, the seat of power rests with the people. And as we're about to see through our course, the idea of natural rights, social contract, popular sovereignty, and republicanism have sustained the American experiment for more than 240 years. And the question going forward is, will those ideals continue to sustain the American republic for future generations? So as we wrap up our introduction to the ideals of American democracy, one question that we're going to come back to through this unit is, how are the ideals of American democracy reflected in our foundational documents? And that is the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. And if you've ever been curious what these documents actually look like, well, wait no further because later this year, our AP Government and Politics class will go to the National Archives and visit these documents, and you will get to see them firsthand, which is truly an awe-inspiring sight to see.